What's going on guys? This is Bunny Muffins. I have the meta snapshot for patch 12.12c and I know it's been a little bit. We're going to be going over how to play every single one of the best comps and identify which ones they are. A couple of key things right now. It's like it's all about the eight cost dragons. Shio, Yu, and Siphon are just completely bonkers. So in the S tier, Jade, no surprise there. Whispers, that's with Siphon. Bruiser, Mage Siphon. They're like two versions of Siphon going out right now. And then lastly, like Zaya is still pretty good if you get her. And then in the A tier, we have Bruiser Varus. By the way, like S tiers, I say, are like much, much better this patch compared to everything else. A tier is still good, uh, but they're more like top four type of stuff. Like Bruiser Varus is top four, Shapeshifter Nidalee, top four. But the A tier is just like, yeah, it's there's a pretty big gap this patch. But there, it doesn't mean that they're horrible. It just means that the gap is slightly bigger than it is before. But in the A tier, we have Bruiser Varus, Olaf Reroll. Shapeshifter Nidalee, uh, Fast Nining with like Ao Shin, Cannoneer Corky, and Ezreal Reroll. Not really too many surprises there. All of these comps, they're either like very top four ish, like the Shapeshifter Nidalee and the Bruiser Varus, or they're like super high roll, such as like Olaf Reroll. If you get like Assassin Spat Olaf 3, if you go like Fast Nine Ao Shin, you could win games a lot like that. Uh, B tier, these are where all the, I'd say like much weaker comps are. Uh, all the. Pretty much all the Dragon Mancer comps got nerfed a bunch because they hot fixed it in a in the C patch. Legend Vola Bears there. That's both like the Cavalier and the Dragon Mancer version. Mage Nami, Swain Reroll, Dragon Mancer Lee Sin, uh, like Dragon Alliance, Dragon Horde. I think is around B tier ish. Deja, eh, not as good as the other eight cost dragons, so no reason to do that. Yone Reroll, Guild Talon, Guild Rise, Karma Reroll. These are all like pretty solidly in the B tier. You're not going to do horribly if you go for these, but just only go for them if you get like good starts for them. Uh, C tier, set reroll, cane reroll, Diana, revel, like, uh, yeah, all this, all this stuff down here, just uh, these I would definitely avoid. But let's get into how to play every single one of these comps. I know it's been a bit. I've been a little sick recently. And yeah, that's pretty much why I have not been posting for a bit, but we are back. So hopefully I will post a bunch this week. Jade plus random carry. So what I love about the Jade comp is that it's super flexible. Right here we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units. And like Bard is not obviously like a late game thing. So you really have six units that you need, which means you could flex two to three other slots. And this could be either something like a Zaya if you want to run Ash as one of the Jade units. And you could do like a Zaya, Shio Yu, like duo carry. You could do stuff like adding in more mystics. You could add in random legendaries, such as like a Yasuo. Really a lot of different things you could do with this comp. I've even seen people do like a Swain carry with Jades. And yeah, that's pretty much the power of the comp. Shio Yu is going to be pretty massive as like both a tank and a damage dealer. Nico's going to be your main tank there. She's one of the best tanks in the game because she has an AoE CC. And then Anivia is great for like supporting your team with like a Morello or for like late game insurance with an Archangels in case the fight goes really long. And then Soraka is just a solid unit. Pretty much every unit you run has a purpose. A lot of comps, they run units just because they fit a synergy, but for the Jade plus carry comp, each one of the units brings something to the table, which is uh, can't be said about every comp. But Shio Yu is just busted. I like Titan's Resolve the most and then Bloodthirster Giant Slayer, just like add in a lot of damage items on Shio Yu. Uh, there are a lot of different other things you could play. You could play stuff like IE, Hand of Justice. All of those work pretty well too, but uh, I'd say like these three combos or these three items are my favorite ones. You could also do tank items if you have too many of those. Like you have three tank items on Nico and you get an extra one, you could put one on Shio Yu as well. Uh, pretty much like Shio Yu uses every single item. Siphon Whispers is the next comp in the S tier, so I think that between this comp and like the Mage Siphon comp, it's really close. I'm not 100% sure which one's better. I prefer this one personally, the one with six Whisper, four Bruiser, just because for me it's easier to play, but maybe for you it's the opposite case and the Mage one is easier. But obviously it depends on what type of units you get. If you're getting a lot of the Mage units, then of course go for go for the Bruiser Mage version. But if you're getting like a lot of the Whispers, such as you get like an early Elise 2 or something like that, uh, Elise is played before Pike, before you level up and get like all the legendary units, uh, then by all means go for this one. Obviously the only unit that actually matters is Siphon because he is just too strong this patch and again he uses all sorts of different items similar to Shio Yu. My favorite combo is what we have right here, Bloodthirster, Titans, and Quicksilver. Some people like IE, some people like Deathblade, some people like Rageblade. 
Uh, a lot of different options you could run on Siphon. I've seen people who have tank Siphon and they still do well because he just does that much damage. So literally, I'm pretty sure you could put any item you want on Siphon. Of course, people have their preferences. My preferences are here, but I wouldn't stress too much. I would just slam items on Siphon and pretty much get earlier value from building the item earlier so you have more HP than other people. For the Bruiser Mage version, you add in stuff like Lulu Sona Bard for all the Mystics and Evokers, and they just give like a lot of utility to your team. Heimerdinger's gonna be stunning people with the Mage buff. Zoe's gonna provide a lot of like invulnerabilities, tank, CC, Zoe does it all. She is just super good whenever you have three mages in. Silas, of course, is giving you all three synergies, such as Whisper, Bruiser, and Mage. And then Siphon's still gonna be your main carry. I'd say in this build, the items on Siphon matter a little more than in the Bruiser build, because in the Bruiser build, you could have like Elise or Pike secondary carry, but in this one, like all the other units, they're more of the support cast. Like everyone in the back line, look at how much CC you have. Heimer CC, Zoe CCs, Lulu CCs, Bard CCs, Sona CCs. So you really do want like better items in the Bruiser Mage build, uh, but both are perfectly fine. And yeah, they're both really, really powerful. But again, the only unit that matters is Siphon. Uh, onto the next build, we have Zaya Ragewing or Guild Zaya. I'd say the Guild Zaya version's a little better right now, uh, but they're both pretty strong. What I like about the guild Zaya version is that a lot of times you build your Zaya items really early and I find that you get a lot of items this set because of all the augments such as like portable forge, radiant relics, uh, item grab bags, all those things. So I generally have a lot of extra items. So if I get too many offensive items, I just drop the leftovers on Talon and I'm super happy about that because Talon, he still does work even though he's not the main carry. Main tank, I like Hecarim. Some people put it on Ornn. It really just depends who you two star first in my opinion, uh, but they're both both very solid. You obviously play Shen and Hecarim as the second and third Rage Wing because they are both the only Rage Wing tank units. And then for the guilds, you have Sejuani for Cavalier, Talon to give AD to your team because that's how the guild trade works, and then Twitch for attack speed and to give you swift shots as well. Uh, in the Rage Wing version, Shivana's a little weak right now, so it's just not as good of a late game as it should be. In previous patches, it was really good, but I'd say now like the guild version is a little better. But for this one, you run like Jades and Shio Yu early, and Shio Yu is kind of like the item holder for Shivana. And then once you get Shivana, you swap them out, and then that's kind of like your late game cap. Tank items on Nico as well, and then Zaya main carry there. Um, onto the A tier, we have Varus Bruisers. This one you just reroll for Varus at level seven. Uh, pretty simple stuff. It's pretty much a top four comp because uh, because you just get the Varus three super quickly, and then your team kind of caps out. Uh, really early so that's why it's not that great for getting first place but sometimes you could go like level 9 because you snowball the game because you hit Varus 3 early and then get random legendaries put in later on uh, it's a pretty solid build there are a couple of different ways to play it some people just do 3 astral and reroll at level 7 some people do 6 astral and reroll at level 6 that's in the that's kind of like a thing that I've been seeing recently as well. So my rule of thumb on deciding which way to go is if you're contested, the 6 Astral version and rolling at level 6 is a little better. But if you're not contested, go for the level 7 and 3 Astrals and just get all the like bruisers and the swift shots. Uh, one thing to note, you don't have to play for swift shot. You could add in like Lulu Sona instead. Lulu Sona Bard probably fits in every single composition instead of adding in the extra swift shots. Um, so just like a quick note there. Next build up, we have Olaf Reroll. I really only recommend this if you get Assassin Spatula for Olaf because it just becomes a lot stronger with Assassin Spatula. Like, it's not even close. And yeah, that's pretty much what you would want. Uh, items for Olaf, he could pretty much use anything. I like having QSS. Assassin Spatula is obviously the best item. Uh, RFC works, Rage Blade works, Titans works, Bloodthirster works, Hand of Justice works, Death Blade, Runons. Yeah, any attack damage item is going to work great on Olaf. Uh, I like doing Diana secondary carry, but she's really not that great, so Frozen Heart Duty for her. And then for tank items, drop them on Orn or Silas, depending on who you have start up. Like, sometimes when you reroll for Olaf, you get like a three-star Silas out of nowhere. Um, in that case, then, yeah, put the items on Silas. If not, put them on Orn. And late game is going to be Pike. Pike is... he cleans up everything. Uh, I really like Pike. I think he's one of the more underrated legendaries of this set. Uh, next build up, we have Nidalee Reroll Shapeshifter. So this one, it's another top four build because you get the Nidalee super early and then you just win streak, have high HP, and then slowly bleed out while everyone else dies out. You do have the late game of Shivana two star, but again, 
Shivana, not that great this patch. I'm not just saying she's horrible, she's just, there are better options. Uh, I like building her AP, uh, but you could do tank items as well, both work. I like Frozen Heart a lot because she jumps into the back line, and then adding in like Rabidon's Death Cap or something is pretty good. Warmogs is good because they're shapeshifters. Uh, Nico's gonna be your main tank, but really you just roll for Nidalee at stage 3-1, and then she hopefully will carry you through all of stage 3 and 4, and then by that time hopefully like two people died, and you have like 50 health while everyone else has 20. And then the other people, they hit their insane boards and then some of them win out, but hopefully you get like fourth or third place. That's pretty much like the goal of this comp. But overall, pretty simple stuff. I like having the Jade thing because you run Nico and Nar, but it doesn't have to be Soraka, it could be anyone. Soraka is obviously the best unit to add in, but she is a legendary, so it is a little more difficult to get. Uh, next build up, we have the Fast 9 build with Aoshin Tempest. Pretty much you run Aoshin and then you run a bunch of tanks. The tanks don't really matter. Um, obviously you run Orn because he's a Tempest. I like adding in Hecarim, Nunu, uh, Nico, pretty much just any two star tank that's like a late game tank. You just throw them in because you want to buy as much time as possible for Aoshin. ZZ Rob Portal is good. Training Dummies is good. Pretty much anything that gives you tankiness whenever you're going this build is going to help you so much because it just allows Aoshin to cast like maybe one more time because that's really all you need to wait for. It's pretty much just a stall comp and you do need a lot of HP to run this build because you're going for like a legendary unit and 10 gold for a legendary unit in like stage 4 and 5 it costs a lot so you're probably not 2 starring Aoshin for a while. Luckily you don't need 2 star Aoshin to win games so... Uh, you just need the one star, but you do need a front line for this comp to work. Next up, we have Corky Cannoneer. This is probably one of my favorite builds, not because it's good, it's just like fun to watch the Corky Big Bomb shoot out. Idis does get outshined by a lot of the other 8 cost dragons because Idis really only tanks. He doesn't do anything else. He just takes damage and he does absolutely zero damage, which is fine if it is a front to back fight. So what does that mean? Front to back just means that people have their DPSs and their tanks and then you have your tank and your DPSs. That's like a front to back fight. If they have assassins and they kill your Corky and your backline, Idis is absolutely useless. So whenever you're facing an Idis player, have some way to access a backline, such as like maybe a Sona ulti carry or like a Yasuo and maybe he jumps to the bag or just of course assassins because yeah, Idis is not dying, but if the rest of his team dies, he is pretty much useless because he does zero damage. Um, so just keep that in mind. That That's one of the reasons why this comp is like not that higher tier. It's not like S tier because you really just run one tank and that is pretty much your team. And if they all focus him, you win. If they don't, well, you're, <laughs> you're probably going to lose. Uh, onto the next build, we have Ezreal Reroll. So this build, I was actually hesitant on putting this in the A tier. It's probably like A minus, B plus right now. But if you get a lot of Ezreal's, it's really worth exploring because it is pretty much like a guaranteed top four. Uh, and sometimes you could even win with this build because if you hit everything early, you just go all the way, power level all the way up and then add in strong units later on. You don't have to run like the four Guardian as you see here. A lot of people run like Shio Yu instead and the Mystics, uh, such as like Lulu Sona Bard with Shio Yu. And yeah, both versions work well. It really depends what you're hitting that game. Uh, you really only care about Ezreal 3-star and Leona 3-star. Everything else, like Taric, Karma, you don't really care about those. If you get it, great. If not, like, who really cares? Uh, Braum, Thresh, they're optional because they could be replaced with Shiyu. And then, yeah, it's like you just run random stuff you hit. It really depends on the game you're running because sometimes you hit the 3-star, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you hit an early Shiyu, sometimes you don't. So you have to mix and match your team. Pretty much just run frontline and as much frontline as you can if you have the Ezreal carry because he just needs time for his Archangels to stack up uh, for him to kill everything. And stuff like Ascension, really good with this build as well because it's kind of like a stall comp for Ezreal to scale up and carry during the fight. And uh, now onto the B tier. Yeah, all the Dragonmancer comps, like Dragonmancer got big nerfs, so of course it's going to be down a little bit. There's actually like a new Volibear build though. It's with Cavaliers, and the reason why this build works really well is because Volibear with the legend trait, he steals the armor and magic resist that all the cavaliers get, so it ends up being like a ton. So I think this build was invented in like China, and so people call this like Chinese Volibear or something like that. Uh, I do find it stronger than the six Dragonmancer version, so when I do go Volibear nowadays, I do go for this version, but for Volibear, items 
Rage Blade, Quicksilver, Bloodthirster, not too much breathing room there. I'd say the most important are Gwinsu's and Quicksilver and third item. If you have like a healing from an augment, you could go like a Titan's Resolve or like more damage or something like that. But generally, like these are the three items that I'm going pretty much every single game because he is the only unit that matters. I really don't care about any other unit I have. So I'm pretty much forcing these items whenever I'm going for Volibear. Bear. For the three Cavaliers, I like having Nunu, Sejuani, and Hecarim. And sometimes I like eating a unit with Anivia, sometimes I don't. It depends if uh, it depends if I have items for the other people, uh, because Anivia is in the back line, so she doesn't really need the tank stats like Volibear and Orn do, so that's why you sometimes don't want to eat someone with Anivia, because you'd rather just have the extra unit. Your late game is going to be capped out with Yasuo, because he's a Dragon Mancer as well, so Yasuo 2 is going to be great for late game power. And yeah, this is pretty much just a team. You just need Volibear to <laughs> solo every single game. Uh, do watch out, there is a bug out there right now. If your Volibear gets Zephyred, he eats a unit without gaining the stats. They're fixing this in the future patch from what I hear, um, but just something to look out for. If you see someone with a Zephyr, just always move around and don't get Zephyred because it is just that important. Um, On to the next build, we have Mages. So Mages, they're in the B tier right now because I just feel like they're not as strong as they used to be. The Nami Power Spike just doesn't hit as hard as everything else. So what you're actually trying to do with this comp is make it to uh, level 8 or 9 and roll for Zoe as soon as possible because Zoe's really, like, I wouldn't say she's a carry, but she's like a, the best support unit in the game if you have at least 3 mages because she just gives your team invulnerability, she CCs the whole board, uh, and then like, honestly, the Ivern and Lux ultimates are like the worst ones, in my opinion at least, because Lux ultimate, you don't want to itemize AP on Zoe because it's a little inconsistent, because it's a 1 in 4 for damage, and then obviously for Ivern, I'd rather get a Kale ult than an Ivern ult. But that buys a lot of time for your Nami to stack up Archangel stacks, maybe you have I Rise itemize as well, he can carry two, uh, but yeah, compared to every other comp right now, I wouldn't be, I'm, I'm not as happy with the mage comp. It just doesn't feel as powerful and there are just better things to play right now. But if you start the game with a lot of astrals, you start the game with like a couple of tiers, sure, go for the mage comp. Um, maybe you get like one of the good augments, you get like meditation or Luden's echo or something like that. And then yeah, in those cases, go ahead and play this comp. But if not, I would kind of avoid it. Uh, Swain Dragonmancer, man, like, yeah, it's just another Dragonmancer nerf comp. I wouldn't try to play this unless I get a lot of Swains early. Not really too much else to say there. Uh, Lee Sin Dragonmancer, same exact thing. Oh, yeah, just all the Dragonmancer comps, they just got completely wrecked. Uh, I wouldn't say that they're unplayable, but you just really need the three-star Lee Sin. If not, you're going to be struggling. Like, two-star Lee Sin, I wouldn't say enough. Two-star Volibear can actually live for quite a while, but yeah, for Lee Sin, you, you pretty much need the three-star. Uh, Dragon Alliance or Dragon Horde. This one is decent. You don't actually want to play, like, all the dragons. You want to play, like, Lulu and Sona to complement them, but you pretty much just need one tank dragon and one DPS dragon. The DPS can either be Siphon or Deja. The tank can either be Idis or Shio Yu. Uh, Shio Yu can honestly fill all three roles. It, she can tank, she can damage... Um, she could be everything in between, so just keep that in mind. And then for late game, Aoshin is a good carry, Shivana is a good carry, uh, and then you just run like a bunch of support units such as Lulu, Sona, Bard to cap out your comp. Mirage or Mirage Guild, Deja. Both of these comps, the, ugh, man, Deja is just so much weaker than all the others like Siphon and Shio use right now. So I don't really recommend playing this comp unless you like really like playing Mirage. It's not bad, but it's just not very good. But you just do standard leveling for this. Uh, try to copy whatever you see here. I like doing like the nuke build right now. There's like still the attack speed build, but I like the nuke build a little more because they nerfed Deja's attack speed. Rageblade's still decent on Deja, but it's just not as good as it was before. Um, but the nuke build, pretty cool. You could also do like Archangels because it like stacks up towards the end of the fight. Um, and then you just run like a bunch of tanks. In this build, we have the Cavaliers to really eat up all the tankiness. Um, but it also depends on what Mirage variant you have. I have some quick notes over here. So if you want to head over to the website, bunnymuffins.lol to check that out. Um, just gives you like quick tips for each of the each of the Mirage variants. Yone Reroll Guardians. It's one of the weaker rerolls right now. But if you get it, 
really early. So, like you start the game with the Yon 2, and then by the time you reach stage 3, you have like a couple more Yones. Uh, you might as well go for it. It's not bad, but it's just like very rare that you go for it. But I want to leave the option up there because um, it is like a solid build. You could go like the Guardian version if you get a lot of the Guardians to 3 star. If not, max out your Mirage units. Uh, it also depends what the Mirage variation is. You probably want something that buffs up the Yone, such as uh, Electric Overload, Warlord's Honor, Executioner's Duelist Dexterity. Uh, those are probably the better ones for him. Oh, I actually have the listed up down here. <laughs> so you could look at here for what variations to go for. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's just like not that great of comp. It's just okay. But if you have it, you have it. Uh, Talon Assassin Guild, same story here. Why are you going for this build when Zaya exists? Just go for Zaya carry if you're doing a guild build. They pretty much use all the same units, except you just run Zaya, and Zaya just kills a lot more things. Uh, Guild Rise, so this one's a little different. <sighs> Compared to Mage Rise, I like the Guild Rise version more if you're actually just purely going for Rise carry, but Mages is a bit more flexible because you could stabilize earlier with the Nami, and then you go into Zoe later on. Um, of course, this comp runs both of them anyways, but you're not really going for Nami 3, so it's harder to stabilize, so you really only go for this if you get like a Rise 2 really, really early and you have like no Namis. That would be the only reason for me to go for this comp. If not, I'd just play the mage version um, and just go from there. C comps, uh, yeah, pretty much everything in the C tier, they all got nerfed really heavily, so I kind of just ignored that. Um, as for item starts, it really depends what you want to do. I actually like going belt start a lot. I, I don't know why. I Well, I'm kind of fine with any, any item start nowadays because I feel like all of them are actually like pretty usable. Uh, I avoid tier and rod just because I don't play those comps that much, but that's just a personal preference. I wouldn't say that is like optimal to purposely avoid them, but I'd say like sword, belt, bow, and chain. Those are like my go-tos every single game. I just go for whichever one isn't like too contested and then just try to build something from there because with belt, warmog, sunfire, really good. Uh, with chain, bramble vest, sunfire, really good. Bow is like rage blade, giant slayer, static shiv. Uh, sword is like i.e. Deathblade, uh, Spear of Shojin for certain comps, uh, Giant Slayer, uh, like a lot of items are buildable. A lot of people like they stress about getting perfect items and such, but you really don't need that in TFT. A lot of it is just slamming items early and saving a lot of your HP instead, um, and that's like how you get more value from things. But just as a summary, like yeah, in the S tier, it's just Siphon and Shio Yu comps, and of course Zaya. Try to play those as much as possible. Everything else, they're all situational if you get good starts with them, but if you're flexing, just flex between these comps, and they all use like very similar items, so that helps as well. Like um, Shioyu and Siphon, they both use like Bloodthirster, Titans, and like they love attack damage items, so uh, it works out really well there. Uh, but again, sorry if that I haven't posted in a bit. Um, I was just like sick the past week, and I had like a trip before. Um, I have another trip coming up, so hopefully I'll pump out some things like during the trip anyways. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully this helps you guys out during your climb in this patch. I believe the patch ends on the 13th, and this patch was a little longer because of the July 4th weekend. Um, but yeah, I'll be coming out with like new guides for that next week once it comes out. So do be on the lookout for that. Subscribe if you have not already. But apart from that, I will see you all later. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.